Now, just when you thought there was enough to be teaching your students with all of the content descriptors and the um, achievement standards and all of the rest, we've only really just started looking at the uh, additional aspects that you need to incorporate into your planning, um, your scope and sequencing for the teaching of the technologies learning area. Now, the first additional area are the general capabilities. So these are a set of additional curriculum learnings that are spread across all the learning areas. So they're not allocated to one specific learning area. So for example, digital literacy isn't just taught with digital technologies. Now, it may be that you will teach a lot of the digital literacy aspects as you're teaching digital technologies, but it's certainly not an expectation that it all has to be done, or even any of it has to be done. Although, in practice, that would be very rare. So, there are seven general capabilities, and there will be opportunities to address these in the various activities and lessons and units and projects that you devise for your students. So as you're looking at the content descriptors that are going to be addressed in your lessons and so forth, you also look at what general capabilities may be able to be addressed and opportunities for students to learn about those. Now, the key one in relation to digital technologies is digital literacy. So this looks at um, how to use technology appropriately, um, investigating things, researching things with technology, creating and exchanging things with technology, and managing and operating technology. So a lot of the practical applied skills, um, learning how to use a spreadsheet, learning how to use a word processor, learning how to log in, these would all be classed under digital literacy, not digital technologies. But you may teach it as part of your digital technologies course. But learning how to use a spreadsheet, for example, may be better taught when they're doing a science investigation, where they're having to record some data and do a graph as part of a science experiment. So that's where they may learn how to use a spreadsheet. So it depends upon the context of what they're doing. So learning how to use a digital camera might be best taught when they're doing a geography excursion and having to take photographs and so forth and do up a, a montage of their, of their um, geographical features and so forth. So the technology aspects will be taught there. So it's not part of digital technologies, it's part of digital literacy. Now the other main um, general capability that relates a lot to what we do in technologies learning area is critical and creative thinking. Of course we're doing a lot of project work, students coming up with ideas and generating possible solutions to problems and the skills in critical and creative thinking are very much suited for that process. So there'll be opportunities to develop up those inquiring, generating, analyzing and reflecting skills that are part of critical and creative thinking. Then you've got issues around ethical understanding and in both design and technology and digital technologies, there's opportunities to consider whether or not it's appropriate to do various things. Is it appropriate to um, make a chicken coop that has 20 chickens in a one meter by one meter square yard? Is that going to be problematic or an issue for those animals? Um, so a whole range of different things about thinking through the consequences of their solutions and whether or not it's appropriate or right to do, do certain things. Including, of course, um, in the digital literacy aspect around appropriate online behavior and things of that nature. Then you've got intercultural understanding and the opportunity to explore different cultural approaches. Um, so again, if you're looking at different digital technology, or say designer technology, and you were looking at different um, shelters, and students were going to be designing a, a shelter for the homeless. As part of that, they may investigate how shelters have occurred throughout history or in other parts of the world. Why is it that in some countries, say in the Middle East, the roofs are flat, while in other countries, say in um, Switzerland, the, the roofs are very, very steep, having to do with the need to get rid of the snow or the rain um, and the extra weight that that causes. So there's a whole range of things that we can look at different cultures in relation to these solutions that they're exploring. Particularly when we look at food, 
lots of opportunities to explore different cultural elements in different um, types of foods. So again, look at that particular um, general capability. Then you've got personal and social capability. And this links in well with students in their um, managing projects and how they have to work in teams and address conflict and the idea that multiple people might have ideas and you have to choose between the ideas that you're going to then produce. So a whole range of different skills and capabilities that can come out as part of personal and social capability um, development. And then there are the more traditional general capabilities of literacy and numeracy. And there are always opportunities to um, develop students' literacy and numeracy skills through various activities where they may have to do calculations or measurements or write about things or um, do draw diagrams and explain their ideas in graphical forms and so forth. So that's the general capabilities and you should always be in your lesson planning and your unit and activity planning thinking about opportunities to address those and develop those for your students.